Hopefully everybody can hear us. Welcome to the live stream. We have some fun for you today. Hello, hello, welcome. I'm Coach Newton. We've got WW19VR with us as a guest. We're really excited um, to see you guys here uh, going live stream. This is our first episode. Welcome. We're kind of excited. I'm nervous because I'm like, what am I going to do wrong in the scene? So uh, I've got V here uh, to help me. He's going to be my assistant coach today. So we're going to be doing some scratch I kind of wanted to show you a little bit of fun here. One of the things that you want to avoid is see if you can avoid getting hit by the bus. Um, the coach is code bus, the code coach. Hopefully you can hear that rattly engine. So I kind of like this. Believe it or not, that's a scratch program. So uh, at the end of today's episode, I'm going to ask some of you that come back next Saturday submit your green screen scratch project so I can put that here instead. So I'm really excited to have V coding with us and helping out. So let me explain a couple of things. Uh, there are a lot of people that are new to scratch. So I'm going to close a couple windows here. So I'm Coach Newton. I'm with Panucation. This is for beginning coders, uh, advanced coders, we're going to have a live stream every Saturday this February, and if there's enough uh, momentum, I'd like to keep it going on Saturday, so same time next week as well. Today we're going to have a theme, but I want to make sure anyone who's new to Scratch has a chance to kind of learn a little bit about it. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, getting help from V here. Uh, one of the big things is this is the website, scratch.mit.edu. And one of the most important things is uh, uh, reading through this, right? I think their guidelines are really nice, right? Be respectful, be constructive, share, remixing. Uh, don't ever share personal information uh, on Scratch or any website, right? So it's private. So there's a big difference between private and personal preferences of things you like versus information that identifies you. Uh, be honest, don't impersonate people, and we're really intending it's a community of learners just like you, different levels. So V's been coding with me since we met a long time ago at one of the library uh, sessions I had, and his brother codes along with us as well. So uh, he's been, it's been great to see like his experience going up. So I want to welcome all new coders to Scratch. So these are the guidelines, um, and I'm logged in. So if you're new to Scratch, talk to your parents about getting an account because what we're going to be doing today in order to interact with us, we are going to be looking at the comments section. So V is going to be watching that. I'll explain what I mean. And then we're going to create a project based on a theme uh, that's unique to a special day yesterday. And I'll talk about what that day was. And uh, once you create your project in Scratch, you're part of the community, then you can share your project with us in the studios. So I'm going to talk about Scratch Studios. So again, get your parents' help, Scratch MIT, get your uh, um, user login if you can. Uh, v, any other recommendations you have for, for new Scratchers? Um, there's some tutorials also in Scratch. Um, if you're new and you might want to check those out when after the class is over because they have some cool projects and they walk you through how to do it and different blocks. Awesome. Great, great. Yeah, I love that insight. I appreciate that help. Um, your perspective is different as a learner, so I love having you on because you've seen it from the ground up. Um, so this is the studio we're using. So for some of you, if you're new to the live stream or you're watching a recorded version, the link to this studio is in the YouTube text description below. So for some reason, um, if you are SVP with your parents and you get um, information, I send that out in advance. But in case you're joining now, you can look at those links. So this is the studio, so Saturday Morning Code with Coach. Uh, this is episode one. This is uh, the fresh start, so we'll be back next Saturday. 
Um, and here's the fun part. In this studio, you see we've been having classes in Zoom in January as practice. So some of you viewers out there, gosh, I'm hoping the live stream has somebody out there. Um, I don't want to get distracted and check into that live now, but um, we're looking at the comments of this project. So you'll see, uh, let me make sure my mouse is, this project is called SMC Saturday Morning Code with Coach Comments. I put this in, in here and I'll click on that here in the tab. And what we're doing is if I refresh it, it'll kind of download the latest and this is where we'll get interaction. So those, oh, there's there's V right there, WW19VR. He says, cool. Hey, we've got Jax Vader 4 watching live stream. Yay. Hey, MNC19 Shark. Oh, I haven't seen you since last year. And WA20Bat, that's my student account. So, all right. So we're trying to keep an eye on the chat. There may be a little bit of a delay when we see your comments, but I want you to know we are, uh, we are looking at that. So welcome to the live stream. And if you're watching and you haven't commented here, please let me know. Anybody who I see comments in here, I will um, add you to the studio as a curator. So right now, sorry, uh, V, I haven't put you in yet either. Uh, you can tell we put together some things at the last minute, but I will be adding students that want to be curators. If you type in the comments, say, please add me as curator. Uh, so again, I only do stuff if you'd like to be part of it, and it'll just make it easier for you to share your projects in the studio. So again, uh, we're going to keep kind of looking at this from time to time. And uh, this is my starting point. Again, if you're new to Scratch, today we're going to go and create from the beginning. So I'm going to click Create. Now, even if you don't have an account on Scratch, you can do this part. Okay, so don't hesitate if you're like, oh, I don't have a Scratch account. I'm watching this video recording. I can't do this. You can still create and you will save your project, your creation to your desktop. And then later, if you get an account with your parents' help, uh, have them contact me. I'll give contact information at the end. Uh, we'll help get you set up, answer any questions. Uh, but again, Scratch is from the MIT Media Learning Group. It's provided free of charge. I've used it for many years. I use code.org, um, Google, CS First. Scratch is a wonderful creative multimedia tool. So you'll see part of that adventure today. So I'm going to click Create, and we'll start seeing here. And if I have to, we'll move uh, Varen and I out of the way here a little bit. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Let's, let's, let's set us up over here like, whoa. I don't know, you could tell me in the chat where to go. I'm going to hide over here with the sprites for a little bit, and I'm going to move Varen here. I like this. All right, we got dynamic video. So this way you can kind of see the uh, Scratch setup. And today, let me go back to the theme. So also, um, yesterday was a special day. It was Western Monarch Day. This web link is also in the YouTube description. So if you want to click on that or on a separate tab to kind of get an idea. And the reason I picked this theme is um, yesterday uh, was designated back in, uh, I think, 2004. The Western monarchs uh, migrate. And one of the problems they're having is, I didn't know this until I read about it, is um, their milkweed plants are getting destroyed, um, as well as a lot of their um, home territory is in Mexico. Some of the forests there are also getting destroyed. So uh, there are efforts out to plant more milkweed plants, right? So if there's no milkweed up along the coast here. I'm in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we've got viewers from uh, Washington State, Idaho, maybe even Virginia, Pennsylvania today. I'm not sure. But wherever you are, uh, be aware of milkweed. So I thought it would be kind of fun to create the project based on that. What do you think, Vern? Yeah, I think it's a good idea to have it like based on a holiday um, that was just yesterday online. Okay, awesome. So help me out. I'm going to go. Uh, do you want to uh, design separate from me or do you want to guide me as I go? What do you what do you prefer to do? We're going to base... we do kind of a combination of both. Got it. Okay, so let me launch at how I'm starting. Um, so in Scratch, hopefully my whole window is showing up. Let me just see. Hold on. Let me just check the, the video stream. I want to make sure people can see the lower corner. It looks like some of it is getting 
cut off unfortunately so let me just change something I had it at 125 percent there I think you can see the whole window I was trying to uh, make it a little bit bigger so people could see but I wanted everyone to be able to see down here where I'm, I've got my mouse um, so once you you've clicked create in scratch this is your starting window here and the commands that you're going to be giving your characters are here. There are different types of commands. I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining everything. I prefer to, like, let's just dive in and do it. Um, with computer science and coding, making mistakes is really part. Uh, I don't know, Varen, what's been your experience? Like, did you find it a struggle to, to be okay with making errors and that that was part of the coding learning? Sometimes it was frustrating um, when I was coding, like I couldn't figure out where to go. So then I usually got help from Coach Newton and he helped me figure out where, what I was supposed to do, like what I, what bug I had in my code. All right. So I'm hoping, um, yeah, that it's a process. I think it's important because there's so many subjects and things that are taught where uh, you're told not to make any errors. And honestly, in coding, if you are making mistakes, that means you're learning and you're trying to do something uh, unique and incredible. So I, it's one of the fun things I have is telling people, please mess up. Um, and, you can't, and you can't hurt scratch, right? So the worst that can happen is the program doesn't do as Varen says. It's frustrating because you're like, wait a minute, I wanted the computer robot to do this. And it has no intelligence, so it's just following our command. So I wanted to start with the butterfly. So we need a butterfly character. Um, and in Scratch, uh, let's pick from one of the two here. So if you go down here to pick a sprite, we're going to go. So the theme is the monarch butterfly. So I'll show that again really quick if anybody missed it. Um, down here in Scratch, you see choose a sprite. And we're going to do a paint as well. But let's choose a sprite first. So sprites are our characters that we're going to mess with. And I'm going to scroll um, scroll down here. Now, whoa, my butterfly color. What color does that look like to you? It looks really dark. I think my green screen is messing with the color of the butterfly. That is wild. I'm going to use this butterfly as I hover, butterfly one. But if somebody wants to use butterfly two, you can use that as well. Um, and then there's some other buttons. Now, your screens are going to look different, so your butterfly is going to be more green. So this is kind of strange. This is something I hadn't seen before. It's probably because of the live stream color matching. So I'm clicking on that butterfly, and it's interesting. Here I see the correct colors. I think it's because of my green screen. Let me... Uh, yeah, it might be something to do with my green screen. I'll have to figure that out some other time. Um, but but I've put the butterfly here. And where, do, where should I start it, Varen? Upper right, upper left? What do you think? Middle? Start it, I think you should start it kind of on the bottom so that you can, like, fly up. Ooh, got it. I'm going to put it here over by my head. How's that? And then for Scratch Cat, do you have any hints on how do people get rid of Scratch Cat? If you click on the Scratch Cat, like in the window, um, it'll move it to you, yeah, to the Scratch Cat sprite. And there's a button in the top right corner, a trash can. If you click that, it'll delete that sprite. Boom. Thank you. Yay. Now that's important. And if you ever panic, one of the things I learned is if you're like, no, I deleted the wrong sprite, you can go up to edit. There is a restore sprite there, so it can you can bring it back. But But honestly, with code, you can always recreate anything. All right, so we've got our butterfly. We need a background, right? So let's pick a nice background. So in Scratch, that's going to be in the stage portion here. So here we go. I'm going to pick, choose a backdrop. Um, what I like about the backdrops, you can pick fantasy, music. The themes are all up here to sort it out. So I'm just going to outdoors. So help me pick one. What do you think? Let's pick a, an outdoor one. There was a garden one, rock garden i'm kind of scrolling through uh but you at you at home you can pick any background you want what do you think v um maybe like the flowers Ooh, flowers there we go i'm going for flowers boom now you suddenly see the flowers there cut 
All right, so we've got, we've got our first background, we've got our sprite. Now what I'd like to do is since it's gonna start from here, let's add the sprite, the milkweed. So this is where um, I challenge everyone to draw their own because I think creating art in Scratch is really nice to see. So in choose a sprite, I'm not going to click on it, but I'm gonna go to this paint, paintbrush and click on the paintbrush and suddenly we've got this little template so let me uh let me move varin and i out of the way here we're going to go over to this side for right now so we're not messing with you varin you're going to shrink <laughs> all right um there we go all right so this little area here after we click paint it creates the very first costume so I don't know, Varen, how would you start drawing a milkweed? This is a fun, fun test. I'll be your robotic drawer based on your, uh, we want to draw like a milkweed plant. Let's see what they kind of look like. Um, kind of like that. I don't know. Kind of. I guess greenish. it kind of looks like aloe vera and then with like a flower in the middle. Got it. So let's see. I'm going to pick the paintbrush. That's right here. Now, once you pick the paintbrush, we need a color. So here's where you go. You go up to fill and, oh geez, you know what? Because of the green screen, now I'm realizing that's what my color block, I must have a filter on. Oh, my green plant is, all right. So in the live stream, this doesn't look green, but I can verify for you that when you see the project on your computers and, it, and we share it, it will be green. <laughs> Um, see, I learn something new every day. All right, there's something I'll have to fix. All right, so I picked the color. So Vera, what do you start with when you're when you're drawing? Do you use the brush? Do you use shapes? I've kind of gotten the color. Depends on kind of what I'm drawing. Okay. Um, like if I'm trying to draw, I guess, I don't know, like an animal, mm -hmm. then I guess I'll use paint because the shapes don't really work. Got it. So I'm going to try to do a milkweed. So those of you at home, you can kind of, I'm going to kind of go. Now, again, this really is green once I save it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make kind of some more branches. Now, this is where, as students of art, you all uh, have to be kind to my artwork. <laughs> I'm a beginning draw uh, artist. So... I love the scratch rules to be kind. All right, so I kind of created some open spaces. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see a little bit better what I've done here. Uh, again, the color's kind of off. I apologize for that. I'll, I'll pick some. What I'll do is the reason I use these closed spaces is we can fill these with the bucket. Have you ever tried that, Varen? Have you ever used the bucket? Yeah, I use the bucket. Okay. Are you drawing your own? Are you working on your own? Yeah. Okay, good, good. All right, I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm going to pick this purple fill just because it shows up in the live stream for me right now. So I picked the color, so you'll notice I picked the fill color. And then once I hold the bucket over an area, it kind of fills it in. So there's my scrawny-looking purplish milkweed plant. But again, that's the fun of Scratch. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can just be what it is. All right, so um, I'm going to stop here. As you can tell, there's a lot you can do. Text, some more. We'll be doing that in some future weeks. We'll be adding layers of things. But I want you to see that there's my milkweed plant all the way up here now. So I'm going to drag that. What do you think, Varen? I'd like put it in the opposite corner. We're going to have the butterfly get fly to it, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put it up here. Again, you at home could have picked your own backgrounds. Doesn't have to be here, but I am looking forward to seeing some of your uh, milkweed. Let me see if there's any comments so far. Let me just do a little refresh here. I'm sharing the comments window. Jax Vader says, I'm using Dinosaur 4. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, yeah, I know. MCC, you have a puppy? Wait a minute. A puppy in Scratch? You have a real puppy. I know it. I know it. Akita, hey! Akita's here. Yay. Jack says, please. All right. So yeah, don't forget uh, to put in the notes. Say, please add me as curator. I'll be doing that after the live stream. 
All right, we got Shark going. All right, good. We've got some comments. So um, I like Akita saying hello as well. So, yeah, don't forget that's uh, in the uh, Zoom. If you look at the actual, sorry, not the Zoom, but the live stream on YouTube, down below there's a link to this project. But you can find it in our studio at Saturday Morning Code with Coach Comments. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the creations. All right, so I have two sprites. Getting control of my mouse. We've put the butterfly down here and the milkweed up here, and we've picked one background. This is like the basics of getting started with Scratch, wouldn't you say, Baron? Kind of like you've got. Let me move yeah, us out of the way. background in. Okay. Whoops. Sprites. Hold on. Let me grab the right thing. All right. Let's move us a little bit here. I'm going to move us out of the way. All right, so now we're in the code section. So this is our working space um, here. And let's start with the butterfly. I'm going to click on it. So think of each sprite. Um, each sprite is a robot that you have to give instructions to or a team member in a band that has their own sheet music. Everyone has their own separate instructions. So the way you know in Scratch which character sprite you're giving instructions to is you see a little image here and it's highlighted in blue. So now we know that we're going to be giving instructions to the butterfly. So in computers, we've got to tell it where to start. So since we physically put it here on the screen, it uses the X coordinate and the Y coordinate to tell the computer where this actually is like a little map. So even on Earth, right, we use coordinates. Do you remember, Varen, what they use for tracking? What do we use, like, real life? Latitude and longitude. Yeah, latitude and longitude. And it's the exact same idea, right? Do you remember which is which? I get confused. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit. Latitude is um, north and south, and longitude is east and west. East and west. All right, very important, latitude and longitude. So those are coordinates for finding an exact location. So if you're going on a treasure hunt, uh, you need that location coordinates, right? So how many times have you watched something like, what are your coordinates? Well, the same thing with the computer. It needs to know where exactly do I put this image? And what's nice is by dragging it to a location, the numbers are populated here for us. So you'll see X is the left and right location and Y is the up and down. And the reason I, I want you to be aware of that is then when we go over to the code, I'm going to the motion blocks, the fifth one down, there are the numbers, there's the coordinates. So that's the very first instruction I like to have out there, right? Is that make sure at the very beginning, the first thing my little character does when I'm gonna start this program or somebody plays it, is it goes to that location. And you'll notice if I click on the block, nothing happens to the butterfly. Why is that very like? Because the sprite's already there. It's it already there, right? There so what do you recommend as like a way to demonstrate it going somewhere else? You could say, like, just for a demo, go to random location and then click the go to that area. Okay, watch this. So I'm going to click on random, and there it went. Now watch if I put the blocks together. So in the coding, we're, we're, the order of the instructions are top to bottom. So the computer's going to do this first, then it's going to do this. Let's click on these together. And every time I click on it, it ends up in a random position. Now, help explain, why am I not even seeing it in that starting position anymore? Because the code's running so fast, um, you can't really see it going there. It's running really fast, and if you want to see it, you have to add a delay. Boom. Uh, and delay, we can find here, is one of these orange control blocks. And it's the very, let's try this very first one. So here's where we're going to, and you notice I just put it right into the middle there. So the blocks snap. So now let's see the difference. I'm going to click on the blocks. And there's a starting. Ooh, did you see that? For one second, it stayed at the starting location. And then it jumped to a random position. So this is a, this is a good way to just kind of see the butterfly. Now, for our motion, I think just jumping to a random position is not going to work. But this is a great demo of, of how the blocks work. So I'm going to throw a piece of code away. If you've never used Scratch before, it's easy. You just toss it back into the blocks. Block. And you'll notice they're all color-coded. So we'll be talking about... Ooh, there's an important one there. 
Um, yeah, definitely because of green screen. <laughs> there is a green flag here that's blacked out. Um, this is an important event. Do you want to describe it? What do you think? Do you want to tell people what does this mean when the green so flag is So what the is green clicked? flag does really is like it's the start of your code. Like when you click the green flag, it'll automatically start your code. So that's why you put when green flag click so that the code knows that when you click the green flag, then it should start the code. Awesome. Great explanation. And you'll notice those those types of uh, commands are um, are shaped in a way that you can't put anything before them. So I like to tell students, right, you have the smartphone and it's waiting for me to click the side button. And as soon as I click it, the screen turns on. Well, that's called an event in computer science. And there are lots of different events here. So the computer is waiting for someone to, because we put the green flag out here, it is waiting for somebody to click the green flag. And so now let's try it. If I click it, my program's running. It's a very simple program. It says go to the beginning and wait for one second. And then I took away the jump to a random location. So what I'd like to do is go to the looks block. Let's have our characters introduce themselves. So if you're coding at home, um, go to the looks. And I was like kind of having it say something. So I'm going to do that without the weight. I'm going to throw the weight away. So what do you think, Baron? What should we say? What should the butterfly say? We want people to I think to like know. maybe, hi, I'm just hungry. Can you help me get to the plant if it's like just a simple code game? I'm a hungry, yeah, I'm a hungry monarch. And let's see. I'm going to add another say block. So that way there's a chance for, um, please help get to some milk. I'm going to type it in caps, weed. I know, well, I didn't know that about milkweed. I would have thought it was just a weed, and I think that's why a lot of people get rid of it, not realizing it. It's food for the butterfly. So I met a teacher that showed me their class is replanting milkweed in their area of uh, Canada. So I was like, wow, that is wonderful to hear. Okay, so let's try our program. Green flag. Here we go. Boom. Okay. Let me see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check comments again. Sorry. I'm going to do a refresh. Let's just see if there's anything. I know people start working on their code. Hey, we got <laughs> SP Fox. Latitude, latitude. Please add me. Yay, it's a lot easier. Using Piscal to draw. Nice. Thanks for joining. Great to see you. We got Duck Lover. Can I be added? Yes, you can. Um, all right, awesome. Yeah, let me know what you're doing in your projects. We'll look, and then at the end, please, please, please share uh, into, this, into this studio. Uh, I'm looking at projects here. Um, so we'll be looking later here at the end. So we're going to keep today's program to 45 minutes. I promise. I promise. Um, so we, we are running uh, on tight time. I want to make sure we have a chance to share projects at the end. Okay. So I'm going to go a little faster. See. Okay. So we've coded uh, the butterfly. Let's see if we like the way it looks. Hi, I'm a hungry monarch. Please help me get to some milkweed. Okay. And let's have the milkweed say something. What do you think, Varen? So you notice I, I clicked on the like, milkweed. What about like some special spin effect? What do you think? Motion is or always. Or we have like the color change effect. Ooh, I like that. Good suggestion. Good suggestion. So he's talking about looks, and down here. Now here's the cool part. These buttons here are kind of like the starts of certain chapters of commands, types of commands. But motion and looks, especially one of the hints is there is a scroll bar. Don't assume you see all of the commands. Sometimes you have to scroll down. And some of the best ones, right, are down here that we use a lot. So are you thinking change color effect by? Is that the one you were thinking of? Yeah. Okay, let's try that. I'm going to drag that out. Now, if I click on it, look at my milkweed plant. Every time I click on it, so you can pick a different number. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I don't want a big color change, so I try 10. Uh, the cool thing with code is you can experiment, try the different numbers. Okay, so now you'll notice I'm just clicking it. Let's have the computer like flash through the colors. So one of the things in the control that we realized was not only can we tell the computer to wait so we can see things change, 
but we can use a repeat to tell it to do something over and over. So I don't want it to repeat forever. There is a forever loop. We can use that. That's pretty powerful too. But try the repeat, uh, I don't know, let's do like 25 flashes, 50 flashes. What do you think there? Type a number, 50. Some kids like to go crazy and do 1,000. Um, I think 50 should be fine. It's, it's just to kind of highlight it at the beginning, right? Um, yeah. This is kind of fast. Do you normally put a delay when you do yours? Or do you, do you like that? I put a really the... small delay. Got it. So let's try it. What, what's like small? Like 0.2 seconds. So we're talking about telling the computer to wait. So it changes the color. And I'm going to do 0.2. Oops, 0.2. And then I'm just clicking the blocks to test it. You notice I'm kind of doing that. That just comes from like making sure things are working as you go along. There you go. I kind of like that. And it kind of lasts longer with the delay. Okay, so we need this event, right? We need this to start. And how about it says something so people know, like my drawing does not look like a milkweed. So... <laughs> What should I say as a milkweed plant? That's appropriate. What would a milkweed really say in the real world? I don't know. Don't eat me. <laughs> don't eat me. <laughs> how, about, how about, yikes, a monarch. They are always hungry. Hungry. <laughs> Two. All right, now you'll notice if I put a longer sentence, I like to have it on the screen a little bit longer. So I'm going to say, I don't know, five seconds. And you notice the code's already kind of running. It's doing the color changing. And because we added a delay, I'm going to reduce the looping to like, I don't know, 30 instead of 50. Yikes, a monarch. They're always hungry too. All right, so remember, at home you're creating your own story. So I look forward. Please don't just type the same words I do. Uh, use your creative juices. That's the best part. I'm just kind of showing you the tools Baron is here is helping me to stay on track. All right, now we need to make something a little interactive, right? How do we, what do you think? How do you want to do the butterfly? Um, I wasn't going to necessarily do animation today, but we could do a little bit of animation to fly there. Did you want to do key controlled? What do you think? Or just automatically fly? Um, I think key control would be fine. Or like maybe Flappy Bird style with like, um, you have to hit the space bar for it to fly. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Okay, so he just talked about another event, right? So there's an event for clicking the green flag. We want the computer. Let's check it out. Ooh, the very second one there is already says space bar. So let's drag that out. Now, you'll notice we can't attach that to anything else. So just so I, I've kind of zoomed in on the blocks by clicking the plus. So you at home, if you ever want to click equals, it kind of makes it smaller. I wanted to make sure people could see this in the video. So I'm reordering some things here, and then I'm going to zoom in again. So we've added a new event that the computer is now going to watch for us. So it's waiting for the space key to be pressed. So this is where, uh, let's see, what do you think? We could point it always towards the milkweed. So then every time I hit the space key, it flaps and goes towards it. What do you think? I was trying to think of something simple yeah. as a starting point. So mm -hmm. let's go to motion. So we're going to do motion. Now, I'm going to use this very first block. Now let's test it by clicking it. So there's 10 steps. Every I'm clicking it again and again. So this is basically 10 pixels. How would you describe pixels to people? Like if somebody says, what's a pixel? How would you describe it? What do you think, Farron? I think it's kind of small, maybe a bit bigger. Oh, how? But how would you describe pixel? Or do you have an idea? Like, how if someone said, "What's a what is a pixel?" Is so it... it's a small unit of like measurement that's used in like coding. You use it in like Python, C plus plus, Java, Scarlet, Ruby, um, and like. It's basically uh, like we use inches, yards, miles. It's kind of like the same thing except for code. Yeah, it's the smallest dot on a screen. 
So if you think about it, you'll notice, right? So if I said, hey, repeat moving one pixel at a time 10 times, that gives you a really smooth movement animation. So experiment at home. Uh, good explanation on the pixel. Thanks for uh, doing that. And, and, and again, think about like how tiny a dot is on the screen. Um, so it does depend. So some screens back in the day, they talk about resolution of your screen. The higher the resolution, it means they can get more dots in an inch. So the images are more vibrant. So when you do pixel art, you're using one big pixel that takes up a lot of screen space. So the resolution's not as great, but you get some cool, cool art that way. Uh, let's see. So my butterfly, um, let's go, let's add this block of code. Let's click the green flag. Hey, I'm a hungry monarch. My, my milkweed's doing its thing. If I hit the space bar, there's my slow, slow one pixel movement. That's kind of slow. What do you think? I like, I like going faster. So remember coding, you can pick the speed you want. What do you recommend I experiment with here? What do you think? Um, 45. 45. Let's give it a try. Now I'm going to click just this code. Whoa, that was fast. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, 45 is a huge step. It like flies across the screen. 200 times 45 basically took my monarch right off the screen. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to try five. Let's try this. That's not bad. That's not bad. All right. Now I you'll notice we're not. Oh, what was that? I found a bug in the code. Oh, you did? My code? Yes. So, like, when you say when space creep pressed and repeat 200 times, so, like, it won't stop until it repeats 200 times, and it'll just fly off the screen. So, if you do repeat until not key space, space pressed, then it'll stop as soon as you don't. I like, as soon as I let go? Yeah. Ooh, I like that. So, instead of, so now you're getting advanced. I like this. All right. So, hold on to your horse's new scratchers some advanced stuff. So he's saying, all right, I hit the space key and this tells the computer he's absolutely right. It says, you know what? Go five pixels, 200 times. What's 200 times five, a thousand, right? So that's going to go a thousand pixels, but that's it. I have no further control. So he's like, wait a minute. I want to kind of make it. So if someone holds a space key down a lot, they can control when it stops moving. So the code, we have to tell the computer a little bit different. So you wanted to do what? Let's see. We want to do this um, if not um, space key. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Okay. So we go down into sensing. And don't worry if you don't understand anything we're doing yet, but that's all right. You can figure it out. And if you know it, this is even better because this is a great way to learn how to make your sprites move. So first I'm dragging out. You'll notice this is an, a, a shape, an odd shape, six-sided figure here. So it's a little bit different than what we've seen in the sensing blocks. And I just want people to see it's down here. It's a one, two, three, four, five, six. It's this one when the key space is pressed. Now I just want everyone to realize in scratch when you see these little down arrows, that means you've got lots of options. And the same here, we didn't have to use the space key. So you at home could be using some other key. We're just using the space key this time. But this is how you can program WASD, mouse press games, up arrow, left arrow. We'll be doing that in our future Scratch projects as well. So we're going to say something that says, if, then. So this is what you're talking about. He was talking about this. So this is something called a conditional. And this is how computers make decisions. It says, hey, if this is true, then I want you to do some other commands. So here's the tricky part. You'll notice this would fit in there. And this says, hey, if the key space is pressed, um, you could say, hey, move. But we already have this event here. We, we're, we have the computer watching that. So we kind of want to say, if, if the key is um, no longer pressed, whoops. Oh, geez, that's our five minute warning. Oh my gosh. Um, let, me, let me see, we've got to do five minutes. Let me check really quick. I do want to see if people are ready to share. Uh, let me look at the comments. This goes really fast. Four minutes. I'm finished. Can you go to mine in the studio? Yes, yes. Did not cut out the green and the butterfly. Yay. Add me, please. All right. Okay, so we're going to start sharing in a bit. Put your uh, projects in the studio. 
Uh, I'll do a refresh on this as well. I'm going to still go back to mine. Let's um, let's do this. Very, I'm going to save this for next, continuing next week, the um, the if key pressed. What I'm going to okay. do is I like I like where you're going with it. Um, that'll that'll take a little more time, and I'll pick up with that, I think, next week to keep building on it. Um, my window keeps moving. Um, what I'd like to do here is right now, like you said, it kind of uh, goes for, for 200 blocks. Oh, gosh, my, I'm clicking on the, on the wrong places. And if I click the space key, it kind of goes across. Well, I want it to point towards the milkweed. And so let's see, I think we can do that in um, motion. There's a point towards command here. And I'm going to say point towards Sprite 1. Now, Sprite 1 was our milkweed, if you notice the name. We didn't name it. We could have named it milkweed. So this tells the computer, move five steps and point towards that sprite. Let's let's try this out. Let's just see if this works. I'm going to hit the space bar, and it kind of pointed that way. Now, it went a little too far. I'm going to fix it. I know you were kind of coming up with a cool way to make it interactive to fix it, but I'm going to do it just by shortening how far it goes. Um, and then the other thing is animation. So if you notice here in costumes, there's a costumes tab. There's an animation. There are three images for the butterfly. Now, I'm not making a smooth animation. The other day I was in a class. The student showed me some cool hints. We'll do that next week, how to better animate the wings of the butterfly. But I just wanted students to see that there are multiple costumes. And what we can do is every time it moves, we can tell the computer, can you switch the costume for the butterfly? And that's in the looks. And I like this next costume command. So this next. So I'm kind of saying, you know what? Move five steps, switch costumes. Let's check this out. Let's see what it looks like. Let's go full screen. I'm a hungry monarch. I'm going to hit the space bar. And it's kind of flying. Crazy. A little crazy. If I hit the space bar again. So I would fine tune this some more, but you can kind of see the butterfly image changing. Part of it is one of the images for the butterfly. One of the costumes is this kind of standing up one. So if you want your, your butterfly to kind of just have the wings flap, next week we'll kind of go in here and move the images of the wings. I, I urge anybody who wants to try that to enhance their, their uh, animation. And some of you already know how to do that a little bit. And let's see. Help me name this. What, what can we call this one, Varen? What do you think? The Attack of the Monarch. <laughs> attack of the Monarch. Nice. So I'm showing everyone, uh, please name your project something. Uh, you will need to share it. Now watch what happens when I do. There is a, You'll see there's a save now, but the sharing will also save it. I'm going to click share and it goes to the project page. This is important because you need to tell people what to do in the instructions. So click the green flag to go slash play. And then remember, we added some interactivity, right? So press the space bar to see what happens. I don't like to give away all the secrets because we can add some more. Um, and then if I want to add it to a studio, um, I have a lot of studios, so this is not going to be easy. But if you are part of uh, this studio, um, you can add it here. I'm going to show you a different way. Once you've shared it, I'm going to go to the studio. Where is it? Here's the Saturday morning code. And I click on Add Project. So once... Um, Right now, I've allowed anybody, so all of you can add projects. So there's Jax Vader's. So even if your projects aren't done, please feel free to share. Um, I'll show them if you'd like. But I'm clicking Add Projects, and you'll notice, hey, there's my project. 
Now, it's odd because it still says Untitled 2, but let's see. So I'm closing. So just so people see, Add Projects. And I'll leave the studio open for now. I'll delete stuff if it's inappropriate, but I'm hoping people here that have attended today or watched the video can add it. Uh, let's go back to my Attack of the Monarchs. And if you want to go back to the code, that's called C inside. Okay, so we've kind of got a simple start. We did a lot of intro material today. Um, I like the idea of people doing the Monarch. This one kind of just flies towards the milkweed. And uh, one last thing, let's play a sound. When it gets and says, let's see, I'm going to click on the butterfly. What do you suggest on the butterfly? So I'm clicking on the butterfly. I want it when it finishes moving towards, going towards the milkweed to say, play a sound. So I'm clicking sound. This is the pop. I think, Varian, you can't hear that, but um, I'm going to pick a different sound from the library. Do you have any recommendations? <laughs> Special effects. What was that? You could try chomp. Oh, chomp. Like, yeah. Chomp, yes. C C H O M P. Yeah. Oh, there we go. You hear the... Oh, I like that. Okay, so I've added the, the, the uh, chomp sound to my library. So before there was a pop, there's a chomp. I want people to know you can record your own voice in Scratch. Have a lot of fun with that. We'll be doing that in some future projects here. Don't worry, this is just the beginning. This is the first one. Um, and then we need to use the sound block. So I want to do a play chomp until done. Now, I don't want to just play it once. It's kind of a slow sound. Let's, let's do a 10 repeat chomp. I'll move some of this code so you guys can see it better. I'll do this one later. I'll move that out of the way. So here's, here's what I'm doing. So I'm doing a 10 repeat. Here we go. So it's going to fly, it'll get there, and it chomps 10 times. I might do five. <laughs> All right, this is where parents are like, oh my gosh, the sounds are driving me crazy. Um, you can have some fun with it. All right, so I think I'm kind of good there. I'm going to do a save now. Let's go share some projects. Let's see if we've got Jack's, uh, Jack's Baders. Let's see, he's got, there we go. There's my untitled one. Ooh, we've even got one from Fortnite 9000. Sweet. All right, let me go Jax Vader first. Let's check this out. Save milkweeds. Yes, what a great message. Uh, let me make sure. I'm going to go. It says click the green flag and enjoy. Yeah, I like that you gave it. I'm going to give it a heart and a like already. You can give comments. Uh, code on. Thanks for joining today. Keep creating. All right, let's check this out. Now, Scratch Project, sorry, I think, yeah, on, on, on the screen you're seeing, if you play it, the colors are, are messed up, so the greens are kind of off. So this dark stem, he does have his green because I'm looking on my other screen. Here we go, full screen. Here we go. You help me save milkweeds. Awesome tasty because they're food I'm running out of food planting and don't pull out what a great what a great message project you created awesome and what I really like is boom the artwork wonder what I should eat for lunch. <laughs> they are not weeds. Nice. Yeah, think about how many people can learn from your project. I love it. I love it. Nice job. Now, here's what's kind of cool is if you ever want to see... Oops, oh, I'm clicking in the wrong place. Uh, if you ever want to see inside and look at somebody's code... You can see how they did it. You can see the sprite that he drew. Nice artwork. I like it. I like it. 
and the butterfly as well. So I was definitely going to say, hey, you could change the colors to make it look like a monarch. Uh, I didn't do that on mine, but you can go into the costumes and do that. Nice job. Good job. Thanks for, for posting that. Let's see what else we've got. I like it. I like it. Ah, it's not going back. Let me go back to the studio. Oh, it's it gave me a little pop-up that I couldn't see. Uh, Fortnite, can I look at yours? Is that all right if I do that? Anybody else want me to share theirs? I'm going to take a quick look, even if you... <laughs> Duck lovers. <laughs> lovers in the chat all right hold on let me go let me go back to the studio let's take a look at uh we did save the milkweed stick skater jumper what this is not from today is it oh i like your skateboard i'm gonna check it out <laughs> oh wait i have to play <laughs> this is your game <laughs> all right this is a game created before hold on i'm really bad let me let me stop all right, so he's he's added some animation in this one. Yeah. All right, I'm really bad at this game. All right, so I wanted I like that you shared this. Uh, it's not part of our project from today, which is what I think is cool that you share it to, for people to see. Um, you can create anything in Scratch. Um, doesn't have to be the milkweed one. I'm hoping you're working on one. I like that you shared that. You can look in the code. We'll be creating some more projects like that. Uh, as well, some games and interactivity. You can kind of see we started with that. Next week, we'll make the uh, Milkweed one uh, even more interactive and show you how to go to different levels. Uh, one of the things I did want to do is uh, hold on tight here while I go like, all right, let's go. So Varen's still there, don't worry. Uh, but I did want to share something about what's new, right? So um, in Scratch, I would feel terrible if I didn't mention a couple things is... Um, in Scratch, if you go to, uh, when you first log in and you go to the main window, there's Introducing Scratch Lab right here. So I recommend you try Scratch Lab. So this is completely new. I didn't get a chance to play with it today, but I want you to check it out. They've added, it's a space for them to test new blocks. So they've added a new animated text block. So you can kind of see what it looks like here. Um, and you can try it out. And then this is one of the coolest. Now, this is hard to do because I'm using my camera. So I would have to pre-record some code. And I'm thinking of doing that next week. Put in the chat if you think I should do that. And I would record a little video of my coding of how I did this. But you can put objects to follow your face. So since I'm using the camera now, I can't really get that code to work and show you but definitely I encourage you to try it out so scratch lab don't forget how to get there and try those blocks since they are experimental if you read the uh, questions and answers the FAQ frequently asked questions it tells you about how you can save it locally but you can't put it in a studio uh, because they are experimental so I think they'd love to hear feedback from people and then the other important thing about February is code.org is one of the other groups uh, it is um, important, right? They put uh, it's uh, Black Voices for Computer Science. Black History Month is in February. Um, I should turn this what's new thing off. Uh, there's a great video that they have on their site uh, celebrating diversity uh, in computer science. So I think the more all of us can share and making sure everyone's aware of this great way to create stories uh, in your community, Everyone has friends. Share the word. I think it's important we spread that out. So I just wanted everybody to be aware of things that are new that's going on around us. Um, so try that out in Scratch Lab. Uh, oh, Varen's camera is off. Uh, this is kind of the wrap up. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for joining us. Probably went a little bit over. And uh, this video will be available later for others to watch. So tell your friends. We'll be back next Saturday. The emails for your parents to contact me. If you would like to be an assistant coach like Varen was in one of the videos, just need permission forms and things like that. Uh, I am looking for others uh, to join and help share their experiences in Scratch. So join V and, and, and I in this uh, endeavor to share in the live stream. 
So we would love to see you. Uh, hope you had fun. Keep creating and uh, code on. That's my CO. And Varen, thanks for joining. Hope, hopefully you're there. Ah, V. Hi. Oh, there he is. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday. Bye.